Good afternoon and welcome to Marine Corps Marathon Weekend. I'd like to start by saying it is great to be back at full strength with close to 30,000 runners taking part in this weekend's races. I'm Captain Michael Curtis, Marine Corps Base Quantico's Communication Strategy and Operations Officer, and it is my pleasure to be with you all today. Members of the media, thank you for being here and virtually on Zoom as we kick off the 40th Marine Corps Marathon Weekend. Along with our featured speakers, Marine Corps Marathon participants and guests, to include Colonel Michael Brooks, Marine Corps Base Quantico Commanding Officer, Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, Sergeant Major Carlos Ruiz, and our new Marine Corps Marathon Race Director, Alex Hetherington, welcome. I also want to welcome everyone back to the Gaylord National Resort and thank the staff at the Gaylord for all of their assistance in hosting the event. I know that the Gaylord only improves the individual runner and spectator experience throughout this weekend. During this me media conference, we will introduce you to our featured guest speakers and also to a few runners that are participating in this year's race. It is the diverse group of runners that are the reason the Marine Corps Marathon is known as the People's Marathon. Every runner has a story, and each year it is my privilege to seek out and share those stories with you all. You hear a few of those stories today, but there are thousands more out there. That is what makes our Marine Corps Marathon such a unique race and experience. Those runners and families with stories to tell will add this 48th Marine Corps Marathon to their story and etch their names as one of the hundreds of thousands of runners who have crossed that finish line at the Marine Corps War Memorial. Whether running the 26.2 mile Marine Corps Marathon, the Marine Corps Marathon 50K, the Marine Corps Marathon 10K, or the kids run tomorrow, it's their discipline and commitment to run with the Marines that makes the People's Marathon so remarkable. During this conference, we'll provide in important information for the thousands of participants coming from every state, 68 countries, and all branches of the armed forces. For 48 years, the Marine Corps Marathon has enjoyed an enduring presence in Arlington, Virginia, and in our nation's capital. We know the communities of Washington, D.C. and Arlington are ready to welcome the tens of thousands of runners and spectators to the region. We invite the, lo we invite the local community to join the Marines in supporting the runners and turning sidewalks into celebrations. Runners are grateful to have such overwhelming encouragement along the way, and many runners will tell you that same encouragement helped them cross the finish line. Over the next two days, thousands of runners will be headed here to the Gaylord National Resort to attend the award-winning Marine Corps Marathon Health and Fitness Expo and pick up their runner's bib, essential gear, and to obtain vital information to prepare for their run on Sunday. This year, the Metro will open at 5 a.m. on race morning to allow runners to use the Pentagon Station for easy access to Runner's Village and the North Pentagon parking lot. Runners will go through the security checkpoint and utilize the baggage trucks, restrooms, and access to water before headed to the start line on Route 110. The Marine Corps Marathon 10K will start on the National Mall with the event running simultaneously with the Marine Corps Marathon. All Marine Corps Marathon 10K, 50K, and Marathon runners will finish at the iconic U.S. Marine Corps War Memorial. While many run the Marine Corps Marathon to accomplish personal goals, there are others who inspire and motivate simply by their participation and desire to be better. Speaking of striving to be better, I want to introduce my boss who is constantly pushing the Marine Corps based Quantico staff, whether they want to or not, to always improve on whatever they've done previously. May I introduce Colonel Michael Brooks, Commanding Officer, Marine Corps based Quantico, Marine Corps Installation, Na National Capital Region. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Sergeant Major, distinguished guests. It's really good to be back. It is really good to be back, and it's, we are fully prepared to have a great, safe weekend, starting tomorrow with the kids' race. You know, up until this point, we've been in a business mode um, for the entire year, right, Sergeant Major? And um, it is really good now that the weekend is here. This morning at the expo, we had a very good time interacting with everybody, hearing some of their personal stories. And so the weekend is here and the energy is really in the air. So welcome. Um, this is an important event for us because it allows us to maintain meaningful relationships, partnerships with our local communities who do a lot of things for us. They support us in just about everything that we do. It affords us the opportunity to serve and interact with them, uh, with the men and the women and the children across all of America, uh, who may have not, never had an opportunity to interact with Marines, uh, spend time with Marines, had an experience with the Marine Corps. And this opportunity this weekend gives them exactly that. 
This is an opportunity for all runners and spectators to get an up-close look at who we are as Marines, to see the professionalism, the discipline that each Marine embodies. But it also uh, see that the men and women who represent, it allows them to see the men and women who represents them and represents America. Those men and women who have made a commitment themselves and they have sworn an oath to serve and protect the Constitution of America against all enemies. This year at the suggestion of our new race director, Alex, who I will talk a little bit more about later, uh, we started applying different themes to some of our races throughout the year to pay special tribute to our history. This year marks an opportunity for us to remember those who sacrificed it all in Beirut, Lebanon in 1983. The sacrifices made by those men and women and their families should never be forgotten. And in that same manner, we believe it is important to take the time uh, at our event uh, to pay special tribute to them, to remember the 220 Marines, the 18 sailors, and the three soldiers that lost their lives but also remember their families because they sacrificed as well, and especially on this year, which is the 40th anniversary. Today we have Mr. Mike Chard, um, the Ar an Army veteran who served in Beirut from June 1983 to eight, uh, April of 1984, and he will also be running the marathon this year in honor of the Beirut Veterans Association. So sir, thank you so much um, for being here with us this weekend, and thank you so much for your service. As the installation commander, uh, for Marine Corps Base Quantico, Virginia, I have a unique, uh, I'm in a unique position to be able to kind of see all the actions that Alex and the team puts into this. Um, it's good in a lot of ways, and in some ways it's, it's kind of frightening is the amount of collaboration that, that we do with our, local, uh, with our local community partners. There's a whole, just a whole host of logistical, administrative, and operational requirements that the Marine Corps Marathon staff uh, work through over the course of a year, as they also work very hard on executing numerous other races. So it's not just this race, but they do several other races throughout the year as well, both out in the community as well as on the installation. I see all the planning, the preparation, collaborations I've already stated that we are known for as Marines during these planning stages. I also see the commitment and the resiliency when unforeseen events appear. And that's when I really see the passion uh, that both the staff and the Marines have when they pour their heart into making sure that this is a successful event for everyone who comes here or participates in or support. Uh, passion, passion. <laughs> uh, but the reason that I bring this up is because what becomes very apparent in the amount of pride and care that the staff and the Marines have for the marathon and what this race means to us and the 30,000 runners and spectators who travel to Arlington, Virginia and the nation's capital to experience what it really means to run with the Marines. This marathon means a lot of different things to a lot of different people participating in it and it's not a race that one will run to get a cash prize uh, because we don't have cash prizes. It's not a race that one just runs just to kind of tour around Washington, D.C. and see the sights. Um, it's, it's something much, much, more be uh, much better than that. It's a race that one runs to finish a chapter in one's life or a, to add an additional chapter to their lives. It's to commit oneself to a disciplined training regiment uh, for however long that training regiment was, and then to come here on game day, along with 29,000 other runners, to accomplish the final task. And then finally, this race definitely doesn't happen by itself, and it didn't. We cannot do it ourselves. In addition to the volunteers and the Marines who support the race in many ways, it also takes support from our sponsor organizations who help us make this event better and greater every year. And it's only with the support of, the, of organizations like LIDOS and our Washington, D.C. area BMW centers, two of our presenting sponsors this year, that we are able to put on a race that is consistently recognized as one of the best races in the country. I'd also like to, record, uh, to welcome one of our new sponsors, Recover, Recover Brands, our new apparel partner this year, which offers planet-approved clothing. Their support, along with Navy Federal Credit Union, Sodexo, who have consistently sponsored numerous races that we put on throughout the year. We just cannot do it without them. 
These sponsors, along with many more, are just so critical for us to be able to put to uh, really sponsor, or really to, to host this event. It's critical. So as I promised, I want to thank and welcome to the team, the new Marine Corps Race Director, Mr. Alex Hetherington, who is a retired Marine himself and an all-Marine runner who has run in more races than I, I just don't know how many races you've run, um, Alex. Um, but he understands just how much this marathon means to the Marine Corps and the people who run in it. He has taken over for our very on and very popular Mr. Rick Nillis. Uh, very hard shoes to fill, but Alex, you have just done a, an outstanding job. And, uh, you know, as I walk around here, uh, even though I wasn't part of the staff prior to uh, COVID-19, uh, you have gotten us definitely back and surpassed that. So re I really appreciate the hard work that you've put into it and the staff. Um, this, is, this is just an awesome event, and it's good to see the excitement that's in the air. So thank you so much. I want to close by thanking and acknowledging also all those men and women, the, the numerous organizations that come together, uh, that collaborate with us, um, and, and they too put in their time, their passion, and spirit, uh, all to add to the atmosphere of this weekend. Uh, we could not do it without them. We could not do it without our, our numerous volunteers, the numerous support that we get from, the, um, from within the Marine Corps, just want to just take a little bit of time to show some appreciation to them. And um, the last thing that I will follow up with is this is the People's Marathon. Everyone has a unique story, and they continue to come and they support this event. And as long as they continue to do that, the Marine Corps will always make sure that we're there to help facilitate and cheer them across the finish line. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for those great comments. As Colonel Brooks mentioned, it takes a special level of commitment and dedication to train for and complete a marathon, and those attributes are demonstrated by the close to 30,000 runners who will take on the distance this Sunday. Our theme this year is resilience, and our next speaker has shown that trademark Marine discipline, commitment, and resiliency throughout his more than 20-year career. Sergeant Major Ruiz assumed his current post as the 20th Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps on August 10th. A native of Sonora, Mexico, he enlisted in the Marine Corps on November 2nd, 1993, a year before I was born, actually, out of Buckeye, Arizona. <laughs> Sergeant Major Ruiz has served at every level and has deployed all over the world. We are so lucky to have him with us today. Please join me in welcoming Sergeant Major Ruiz of the, Mar Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, Sergeant Major Carlos Ruiz. In, in November of 1993, I think you were still doing logbooks here, right? You were doing logbook as the runners and giving lollipop sticks, right? You've gone a long way. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone a long way, and so have I. Um, I think I'll start with uh, I think I'll start with who we honor this year, with Beirut and the Lebanon Marines and our friends who were there, and I'll I'll share a quick little story. A couple of days ago, the Commandant and I went to Lejeune, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, where the Beirut Memorial is located, sir. And uh, it's not a big park, but there's a wall, the other wall, has the names of, of the fallen. And uh, we drive to the place, and there's a long line waiting to be screened for security to enter the park. And it just hit me, right? It's like, wow. So the commandant gets out of the vehicle and he gets swept away. And I get to be Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I proceed to go see the veterans. What do I see? So if I can image you through uh, the people that are, represent this country today, um, the leather vest, the USMC patches, the hats, um, uh, the gear that they wore, pieces of it. Um, maybe they're not as uh, in shape anymore as they used to. Um, so maybe a little heavier, a um, lot more hair, uh, a lot of more limps, you know. But holy cow, 
uh, when you send out the uh, war cry of Ura, it was a thunderous Ura back. It doesn't, the spirit of service, not just about being a Marine, but just service, um, is still alive and well in this country. And uh, it made me very proud. So to the Marines of Lebanon, to the veterans that are out there, the veterans that will be here in the next couple of days, thank you, and we need you. Um, we need you to continue to contact, maintain contact with the new generation. Uh, we're fine, but we need you. Um, and then I'll shift to an observation. So I got to escape again, and uh, I went downstairs to see the volunteers. And first of all, to the director, smart move. You have Marines behind the little places to collect the bibs, right? Uh, so nobody is like getting lippy and no one's having an attitude. Like they're very courteous to the Marines. Everything's going very smoothly downstairs, right? But I just sat back and I watched people to the thought of the story, right? And it doesn't really start until the gun goes off and it and begins, it starts making the drive here, right? It starts um, collecting your things and flying here and wearing your swag and you got your right shoes on and you look good. And then you enter this huge place and this is your booth to collect your bib. And you give them your name and they look you up. And then these bibs just sit in this plastic container, right? And they're very well organized. And to the people who make them, means nothing. It's just a thing. But then that Marine grabs that bib and hands that bib over to that person. And then there's somebody on the background video. You know, they're, they're taking, recording the moment. And that person grabs the bib. And I'm watching this happen all down your lines. They get the bib and they, just, they can just image themselves through the miles that they've put in. And then they can image themselves at the start line. Right? And so this is where it begins. It starts getting real. Like I paid a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> and now I must deliver, right? And, uh, and the emotion that it flushes them, and you can just see that they're having a moment, it's pretty awesome. And then you compare that to you know, why Marines join the Corps why a soldier would join, and so on. Because there's still a rite of passage that exists in this country. And that's places like MCRD San Diego, Paris Island, South Carolina, and you can go on with the other services. And they show up and they willingly give up all social media things still, right? And to give themselves over to start a new journey and open up an opportunity uh, Either they're running from something or to something, right? Um, but most are given a chance. The obstacles are the same height, and the instruction is still just as hard. Um, and the young generation, they're just as committed. And they get through it. And that little voice that's in your head, that all marathon runners or 10K runners or whatever it is, that gets louder and louder, that is louder and louder when you're young. Like, it's okay to walk, it's okay to quit, do it now. You don't really hear it when you're older. Like, I don't even hear it anymore, right? That's why you can picture an old grungy guy like me, you know, maybe take the cigarette and throw it and then run. <laughs> I don't smoke. But, uh, <laughs> because I don't hear that voice anymore, right? And so the miles that you accumulate, whether it's on the streets of whatever part of the country you're from or the globe, um, it just quiets that mind. That thing telling you to stop just keeps until you can't hear it anymore. And the next day, you are a better person because of it. And this is what service means to us to give oneself over to a bigger thing, right? And you're in the nation's capital where 
you can see valor and sacrifice displayed through monuments or walkways or whatever you have it. And it's a way for you to recommit not only to yourself, a way to make yourself better, but recommit to a place that gives you the opportunity to become whatever you want, that you can be from Mexico or wherever you're from, Corporal. Where are you from? Haiti. Haiti. That you can be from wherever you're from and you come to this land, just put the road miles in. Maybe you never win that one goal, but holy cow, you would definitely be a better person for it. And so I'm going to help you out even more, sir. So you're trying to finish this one, right? Sunday, just get through it. It's going to be fine. It's going to be perfect. But I'm going to hook you up for next year. You ready? So I'm going to look into the camera, and I'm going to pull out this little thing that I have because I noticed something. I'm going to do some challenges. I am going to challenge for next year's ball. I'm going to challenge Taylor Swift to come run the 2024 Marine Corps Marathon with Marines. I'm going to challenge Bad Bunny to come run next year's marathon. And then I have some other special ones. Dax Shepard from Armchair Podcast. Kate, former corporal. Real deal from Zero Block 30 podcast. Dave Armstrong from the Mill Office, Medal of Honor recipients. This thing needs to be 35,000 strong next year. Okay? Keep believing in yourself. Keep believing in this beautiful country. Show up, and you'll see that we're fine. This is the best place in the globe to reconnect with each other. And with that, I leave you with a hoorah. Thank you for those motivating words, our major. Our next speaker is unique for a variety of reasons. Not only is she a motivated corporal of Marines, but she is also a twin native Haitian and has worked to emulate the high level Marines that, are help, that have helped her at critical moments in her life. Her story is what the Marine Corps Marathon is all about, seemingly regular individuals running for a purpose that is more than simply a cash prize or coming in first place. She, and many others like her, are running for what is gained intrinsically. In that same vein, Marines around the globe choose to serve, no matter where they are in life, because they understand that same intrinsic gain that is unique to wearing our nation's cloth. So without further ado, please welcome Corporal Madrina Jean Charles to the podium to share her story. This down, I'm a little too short. <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> um, thank you, sir, for um, that introduction. Um, like Captain Curtis said, my name is Corporal Jean Charles Madrina. I currently work at the Marine Corps Base Quantico Command Deck. I work for Colonel Brooks. I'm his um, administrative specialist. Um, I was born in St. Mark, Haiti. For me this year, um, I was looking for a challenge. Um, my, I'm the next. I'm the type of person I always look for my next challenge. Like once I get something done, I want to do the next one. I don't want to just sit down. And it's interesting to me this year that our Marine Corps Marathon theme is resilience. I would say that I am a resilient person, um, not only because of who I am, but the tremendous amount of things that I've been through. Um, just to give a backstory, I survived an earthquake in 2012. I um, survived a tsunami, which is at the age of four, when I lost my mother. Um, I was homeless my whole high school years. Learning a new language on top of all of that was not easy. Um, but the thing that got me the most was leaving the one person that matters to me the most, which is my twin. I had to leave her behind when, you know, to come here after the Marine Corps, after stepping foot on the yellow footprints, becoming a Marine. But my stories did not start with just me leaving my sister behind. It started way back when I was 11. An 11-year-old little girl in an earthquake 
I believe it was two, three days after the earthquake. Um, I was trapped in their house, and when they opened, once I, you know, I was able to get out, the first person I saw was somebody in a uniform. At the time, I didn't know who it was. I didn't know who the person was. I just knew it was somebody in a uniform. And I just remember the feeling I felt when I saw that person. Like, yes, I was hurt. Yes, I was in pain. But the feeling I felt inside was I was calm. I was at ease with that person. And just recently, I was just sitting at work and then but my whole years, like, to go back, I'm sorry. Um, my conversation with that person was really, like, it wasn't even a conversation. I just saw his face and then put me in the truck and then I left, right? But his face left such an impact on me. The uniform down to the T left an impact on my heart. And I was like, I want to be in that uniform. And then as I was sitting at work, the person, somebody, checked in, and then as soon as I saw him, I just felt that ease feeling. 11 years later, I felt that ease feeling. The calmness I felt that day, I felt it all over again, and I was like, no way. And then, it's Major Tar. I go up to him and I was like, sir, were you in Haiti? And he was like, yes, and I was like, was it in 2010? He was like, yes, and then I was like, What's your name? And he was like, Major Tar. And I was like, sir, I was in Haiti. And I told him my name. And he was like, no way, because I remember you. I remember when I got you and your twin sister from under the house, from under all these bricks and walls. I remember you. And it was just such a deep impact on me. And I would say seeing him was my motivation to want to be in the Marine Corps. Seeing that uniform was my motivation to want to be in the Marine Corps. So after we had that interaction, when he um, checked in, um, he became my coach because we were talking about goals and I was like, my goal is to you know run the Marine Corps Marathon. And he was like, no way, I ran one. And he, from then on, he started training me and training me, um, which brings me to my next step. My next, it's, with him training me, it reminds me of my um, recruiter, because my recruiter, who is Gunnar Sergeant Cameron, he just reminds me so much of him, because before I joined, like I said, I was homeless. So I didn't have anywhere to stay, but Gunny Cameron saw something in me. After I told him my story about wanting to become a Marine, he saw that girl in me. I lost it along the line. I lost wanting to become a Marine because I was so busy trying to find a place to stay. But he saw it in me. Um, it doesn't matter how many times. Like I will take the ASVAB, I will fail. I took the ASVAB three times. Um, I would fail the ASVAB, and then every time I failed, I didn't want to tell him, and I didn't want to go back because I would get in the bus, go down to Miami to take the test, and then I didn't want to step back in the bus knowing that, knowing that I would be in the same you know, spot that I was when I went in the first two times when I was failing and everything, but Gunny Cameron knew that my road was not meant to end as a homeless, you know. I think I was 18, 19, you know, as an 18, 19 year old. So he would bring me down to the med station and one on one he would tell me, I'm like, Gunny Cameron, I don't wanna, I don't even wanna keep going. And he would be like, no, you're gonna keep going. Cause at the time I had, she's a good person, I promise. <laughs> but I had my, um, Stepmother at the time, she would, she would tell me that you fell so many times, why don't you just go do something else? You're failing, you're not gonna make it, just go do something else. But I knew inside of me, I wanted to be a Marine. Gunny Cameron knew inside of me, I wanted to be a Marine. So he would drop me off and he would pick me up one on one every time. Every time I would fail, I'm like, Gunny, I don't wanna continue. He'd be like, he's like, no, 
we're going to go ahead and we're, we need you in that uniform. And for that, I just want to, like, sincerely from the bottom of my heart, thank Gunnar Sarah Cameron and um, Major Tar. Um, those two Marines really did have something in me. Um, I, I had, those two Marines had a lot of impact in, on me, but throughout my whole years, like I've been in for four years now, they, I've also met so many amazing other leaders. For instance, I have Gunner Sergeant Archila and Master Hinojosa. They ran the last three races, which was the 1775, the 12K, um, I don't, the turkey trout. Gunner Sergeant Archila was the one that introduced me to running races. Um, because running has always been something that I held passion, like so close to my heart every time, whether it was I was happy, if I was sad, if I was. Running is just something we did in Haiti because we did not have toys, but we had running. We would run after one another. We would do all that. So running was always my escape goat. So Gunnar Stern Archila reintroducing that to me because because last year I was supposed to run it. I couldn't because I injured myself at boot camp. But um, with Gunnar Stern Archila's help, it really brought me back to my true passion. Um, but now that I'm back and doing what I love, I know that I'm supposed to be here. Now that it took me two years to be in the uniform that I passionately um, dreamt about for so long, I know I'm supposed to be here. So for it, I will conclude with anyone that is just have a dream or wants to do something, go for it. As long as you put your mind to it, as long as you go for it. It doesn't matter what anybody tells you. Even if it's not your own person, even if it's not somebody that is close to you that's telling you to keep going, you're your biggest cheerleader. You are your, the person that is supposed to push yourself. And for me, um, thanks to Lance Corporal Hampton, who he would not let me like take a nap on a Saturday because he knew that I needed to be trained. He knows that um, I need to be out there, that I have a goal. I have a goal that is bigger than myself. So I, thanks to so many different leaders that I had throughout my whole years that push me, but not everybody have that push. And I would say, if you don't have that push, go out there and push yourself because you're your biggest cheerleader. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your story and being part of Marine Corps Marathon Weekend, Corporal Jean Charles. I know that your story will inspire many others to demonstrate that same resiliency when life presents obstacles. Now I'd like to introduce another runner, runner running with unique purpose. This year marks the 40th anniversary of the Beirut bombings. Mike Chard will be running in remembrance of all the military personnel killed in action during the Beirut operation from 1982 to 1984. Mike's story is one not only of resilience, but remembrance, as he carries the Beirut Veterans of America flag so all can remember the sacrifices made by those service members. Please join me in welcoming Beirut veteran Mr. Mike Chard. Thank you, Captain Curtis, and good afternoon. On behalf of the Beirut Veterans of America, I want to thank the leadership and the staff of the Marine Corps Marathon Organization who have been absolutely steadfast in the BVA's, steadfast in support of the BVA's mission which is to honor and remember the sacrifices and losses 
uh, of American servicemen that occurred in and around Beirut, Lebanon between 1982 and 1984. I know that this year's theme of the marathon involves resilience, and if you'll allow me, I'd like to share a, a brief story that I think applies. Uh, it's kind of like the Sergeant Major. Uh, a number of years ago, I was down at Camp Lejeune uh, for attending uh, one of the annual remembrances that occurs uh, at the Jacksonville Memorial. And while I was down there, uh, I found myself speaking to one of the Marines who had been uh, grievously injured in the bombing at the airport and had since been confined uh, to a wheelchair. And we talked and, and visited, and it came time for us to part, and we shook hands, and then uh, that Marine, he looks me in the eye, and he simply says, Semper Fidelis. Uh, so I turned and uh, was walking away, and it struck me uh, just in the few steps I was taking uh, that not once in, in the slightest way, not once uh, did that Marine mention his injuries. Uh, not once in any way did he speak of the difficulties uh, that he in, had endured in those ensuing decades. And just like then, uh, I would tell you today um, that if that Marine and his life lived uh, are not the embodiment of resilience, then I don't know what resilience looks like, you know? Um, and so on Sunday, when my team and I uh, are running those flags around the marathon course, um, we'll be doing so to remember each and every one of the uh, servicemen killed in action, uh, remembering every one of those men wounded in action, will be remembering their families, the uh, sons, the daughters, the wives, the mothers and fathers uh, who lost their loved ones over there. Uh, but we'll also, uh, we'll also be rem running to uh, remember uh, the lives of service, the lives are of, of sacrifice that I believe uh, are so well uh, exemplified uh, by that Marine I just told you about. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chard, for sharing that story. Finally, I'd like to welcome the new Marine Corps Marathon Race Director, Mr. Alex Hetherington, to the podium. Mr. Hetherington pre previously served as the modern-day Marine Military Exposition Show Director for five years. He has a unique perspective as the race director, stemming from his experience not only as a retired Marine aviator, but also as an all-Marine runner who won the inaugural Armed Forces Championship in 1998. He has run more marathons than most and runs faster than your average junior enlisted Marine or officer and takes pride in continuing to make the People's Marathon one of the best experiences for runners of all levels. Please join me in welcoming to the podium your Marathon Race Director, Mr. Alex Heathers. All right, well, before I begin my prepare remarks, I just want to express, you know, my appreciation for, for the powerful testimony from Corporal Jean Charles, from you, Mike, Sergeant Major Ruiz, Colonel Brooks, and uh, you know, because the sum total of it, it it's uh, you know that that is that is the meaning of semper fidelis for me. I can tell you that much. And uh, you know, I'd also like to uh, thank Captain Curtis for you know the talented way he he puts this all together and does such a wonderful job. And I'd also like to say that I, I have some prepared remarks here. But uh, 
I, I really need to, uh, to footnote Sergeant Major Barry a little bit on this because it's, you know, it's, it's the, uh, the senior leadership goal that, you know, inspires me, and he has some great turns of phrase, and so you might hear some echoes of, uh, of things I've heard from you, Sir Major. So anyways, as, uh, as the new Marine Corps Marathon Race Director, my personal mission is to lead with gratitude, celebrate victories, and maintain the Marine Corps Marathon's AAA rating. To clarify, this AAA rating has nothing to do with financial instruments or roadside assistance. This rating is underwritten by the more than 9,000 Marines, sailors, and volunteers you will encounter throughout the 48th Marine Corps Marathon weekend. It's a rating that's defined by a relentlessly positive attitude, the crisply professional appearance that the sea services are known for, and the accountability to fulfill individual roles and responsibilities in a timely fashion which supports the overall mission of staging the United States Marine Corps single, uh, largest single day public outreach event and the National Capital Region's largest annual mass partic participation athletic event. An undertaking which encom encompasses four separate race distances, approximately 29,000 runners of all ages and backgrounds, 100 plus wheeled athletes, another 200 plus ill, injured, impaired, combat wounded, and veteran and civilian competitors, and approximately 100,000 spectators. All on a marathon course that is a tour de force of the nation's most revered and iconic monuments and public buildings. Additionally, in keeping with the Marine Corps Marathon's global reputation as the People's Marathon, we are determined to celebrate every runner through the transformation of the Marine Corps values of honor, courage, and commitment into indelible individual affirmations of achievement, recognition, respect, remembrance, and rededication. For those who rise to meet this challenge, the presentation of the race's signature Eagle Globe and Anchor Medal, Eagle Globe and Anchor Medal by a serving Marine at the foot of the Marine Corps War Memorial, commonly known as the Iwo Jima statue, is poignantly emblematic of the Corps' mission to serve the nation and its people. Each Marine Corps Marathon Medal presentation is a moment of celebration, but also an implicit acknowledgement and vow, an acknowledgement of gratitude for the opportunities that freedom bestows and a vow of unwavering commitment to the values and sacrifices which have established and sustain it. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for all that you do and will continue to do as you look to improve on the runner and spectator experience for the marathon. Members of the media, the volunteers will have your credentials ready for pickup on the way out if you have not already grabbed yours. Lastly, I want to reiterate how unique this weekend is that we are about to experience. 30,000 men and women ranging from 14 to 90 years old are going to run 26.2 miles and other distances with uniformed Marines and sailors, helping them, encouraging them, and pushing them to the finish line. Every single Marine and sailor that you see out there this weekend understands what it means to have the runners choose to run with the Marines. This is a unique opportunity for us Marines to serve our community in a way that only Marines can, with little motivation and a lot of PT. Thank you all for attending, and we'll see you all on race day. Thank you.